I'm here at Abbott's booth at ATTD in Florence, Italy, to learn all about why Abbott believes that ketones are an important measurement to take into account when it comes to diabetes treatment. They are already using a ketone sensor on humans and have that research to discuss with us today. I've got a lot of content coming from this event, so be sure to subscribe and give this video a like if you enjoy it. All right, here it is. Um, Mahmood, thank you so much for talking to me about ketone monitoring. So I'll admit, I don't know a lot in this area. Kind of just introduce to me and my audience, what are ketones? What, sure. Yeah, what are ketones? Excellent. Thanks for having me, Justin. Of course. It's a pleasure to be here at ATTD with you. Uh, so ketones are essentially a compound that we know do build up in people with diabetes when they're not getting enough insulin. So especially people with type 1 diabetes, when they are not getting sufficient insulin for their body's needs, those, these compounds called ketones, which are naturally occurring in the body, can rise to dangerous levels. And the problem with that is that if they do get to a dangerous level, they can cause serious repercussions for the person living with diabetes, including potentially eventually death. So we really do want to help avoid people going into the state called diabetic ketoacidosis. And that's why I'm really excited to be here with you to talk about our continuous ketone monitoring technology. You said ketones are naturally occurring, right? So they must have a purpose, right? At normal levels, what service are they providing for the body? Sure, so ketones basically are a source of fuel for the body. So when someone, for example, doesn't have sufficient insulin, in the case of type 1 diabetes, and glucose can't get into the cell to serve as the fuel source, which is usually what the primary fuel source is, ketones can step in and serve as that fuel source. But the problem arises when their levels rise to very high levels, and that can cause serious metabolic repercussions, including up to death. So that's why we really want to avoid diabetic ketoacidosis, particularly in people with type 1 diabetes. Okay, so it was announced by Abbott back in 2022 that, that it's working on a sensor that can measure ketones. Mm -hmm. And you had research come out recently in this, in this area. Can you tell us a little bit about those findings? Yes, so here at ATTD, where we are together, uh, we recently presented just this morning the results of our first study in the context of type 1 diabetes, where people with type 1 who were receiving insulin in a monitored setting had their insulin suspended. So they weren't actually getting insulin for a period of time, a defined period of time. And we watched what happened to both their glucose and ketone levels during that period of time. And what was very interesting is that the ketone levels rose before the glucose levels did. And that was important because right now, the way that most people with type 1 diabetes understand that they might be going into diabetic ketoacidosis is because their glucose levels start to rise. And by then, it could actually be already quite into the process of going into diabetic ketoacidosis. So the really interesting thing about the ketone sensor is that it can actually detect that entry into diabetic ketoacidosis hours before the glucose levels start to rise. Interesting, and you also say that ketones start to rise before glucose does. does could ketones also serve a purpose when it comes to monitoring for predicting when glucose levels will go up? So we actually have not looked specifically into that as to whether the ketones could be a predictor of glucose levels. And we're not sure if that would necessarily be the case because there are situations where people can actually have normal glucose levels and still go into ketosis. And that's actually not an uncommon scenario with people who have type 2 diabetes who go on SGLT2 inhibitors, which is a class of drugs, where they can actually develop ketosis without actually having a frank elevation in their glucose levels. So it's a great thought, but it's not clear whether that could actually at all be a predictor of glucose levels. Interesting. And so you had, uh, Abbott had announced that a sensor was being worked on. Is it still on track? Like, is this a plan that for you to come out with a sensor with ketone monitoring and glucose monitoring for people with diabetes? Yes, yeah, so that is in, we're designing that basically. Okay. We are designing a dual glucose ketone sensor as we described previously. And it would be one sensor with our Freestyle Libre 3 footprint, which I think you're familiar with, the smallest sensor around. And that will actually have the ability to measure both glucose and ketone with the single sensor. So that is still in the process of uh, design and submission for regulatory approvals in various regions. Okay. And when people's ketone levels go high, what does that feel like for the person? Like, yeah. I, I think I've maybe felt that. I, I don't really know though. 
Sure. I'm not monitoring my ketones. I, I, I actually don't like own any ketone monitoring and I kind and I wish I did. So yeah. I'm, well, let me <laughs> what does first it feel say, like? first say that you're not alone. Uh, actually, we've done uh, assessments in terms of seeing how often people are actually using the existing forms of ketone monitoring, which are blood and urine testing. And a large number of people with diabetes either don't have a monitor at all, or even if they do, they have expired test strips, or they're just not using them. So that's really the beauty of having the dual monitor, is that it will automatically provide this vital information for people living with diabetes. But to get to your original question of what does it feel like, usually people only get symptoms when it's really further progressed to the point where it is almost a medical emergency at that point. And that's why it's very important to be able to monitor the ketone levels and understand that they're rising before people develop symptoms at all because at that point if you intervene you can help avoid a serious medical emergency okay and so how would patients utilize a sensor like this or rather what would be the user interaction with this what alerts would they be seeing how would they react to that Sure, so we're still designing uh, a number of parts of the in user interface, but the idea behind it is that the ketone level would only be displayed if it was actually uh, in an area that was higher than it normally would be. Because if you think about it, people like you were mentioning aren't used to seeing their ketone levels at all. So we really want to make sure that we provide the information when it's relevant, and we're not providing the information when it's not relevant. So from that perspective, it would actually start showing values at a certain point, and then it would have the capability to alarm at certain threshold levels that would help uh, essentially ensure that people were making necessary interventions at those points. So we're not yet integrated with the pump systems, but once the sensor is available, we're really looking forward to having that integration because you could imagine that someone with type 1 diabetes who's using an insulin pump, sometimes, as we all know, they can sometimes have issues with their infusion sets. It can even start to pull out slightly and they may not be aware of it until their glucose levels rise. But you could imagine using a glucose ketone sensor, the ketone levels would start to rise before the glucose level. So you would actually get a head start on knowing that something is not uh, working properly and you could sort of make sure to resolve whatever the issue is before it became a serious one. And so what's your plan for, for rollout? It sounds like it's still like early stages. Yeah. But is there anything you can offer us yeah. there? So, that, I mean, honestly, uh, in terms of you know the design process, it's we're further along, and we're already, as you know, uh, starting the testing in human subjects. As far as when it would be available, what the rollout would be, we don't have any of those details yet because, as you know, it really depends on the regulatory approvals, etc., in different regions. But hopefully, when it's time for that, I'll be back with you and I'll give you that update. And you'll see see it here first. <laughs> um, and and so. Is this the Libre 4? <laughs> so Everyone we, wants to know. <laughs> we haven't actually uh, come up with any kind of naming okay. for this yet, but if you think about it, it is on the Libre 3 footprint, as I mentioned, so it really just has the capability to measure both analytes. So what it will eventually be called, I actually honestly don't know because I don't do the naming for the devices, but we'll again be sure to share that with you once it's available. Great, awesome, thank you so much, this is awesome. My pleasure, thank you for having me. Of course. I wanna hear what you think. Do you think that keto monitoring is as important as Abbott believes? Let us know in the comments and for more content coming from ATTD, be sure to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. I've also got some extra content coming out on Patreon so you can check that stuff out there with the link below. I'm Justin and I'll tag you later.